earlier, Jamie came into the emergency department with a sore neck. Let's find out what the doctors do next. Jamie was airlifted to the accident and emergency department by helicopter. He'd been playing rugby. He was chasing down the ball and on the verge of scoring an amazing try. Everyone was hot on his heels. But he landed on his neck and everyone else piled in on top of him. Until Dr. Julie knows how bad his injury is, Jamie can't be moved. So the x-ray machine is coming to him. Don't worry, you don't need to do anything. You just need to lie there, all right? Well, not a problem. He's stuck down to the bed. What's the final score, Dr. Julie? The x-ray shows there's no bony injury. He just has got pain on the right side of his neck over the muscle, which would fit with a kind of whiplash injury when your head is thrown forward and back. In your neck, you have lots of muscles which are attached to your bones with tendons. A sudden impact can tear these tendons and muscles. It's called whiplash and it can be painful, but it will heal. Brilliant! So, there's no damage to your bones or spinal cord. What do you think of that, Jamie? I'm relieved. And after a bite to eat, Jamie can go home. But watch out, Dad's got his eye on that sandwich. Have you learned any lessons from today? Try and get on the ball a bit earlier before anyone else gets on it. Top tactics. Good luck with your next match. Bye! Bye. <laughs> Meanwhile, my ouch bleeper's busily beeping. Get a wriggle on, Chris. It's Harry, who has a condition which means he has trouble eating. Hello, Dr Press. How are you? Fine. What is your question? What is an esophagitis? That is a very good question. Oh, what's the diagnosis, Doc? But I think it sounds like you have a case of... I want to know if Dr Chris knows what an esophagitis is itis. Ooh, a double itis. You know that an esophagus is the tube that links your mouth to your stomach. So... Whenever something in your body is inflamed, we put itis on the end of it. And in your case, you have an esophagus that's inflamed, so we call it an esophagitis. And so when Harry eats, his esophagus swells up and food can't get down it, and he feels very, very poorly indeed. So, Harry, can you show me how the doctors have fixed the fact that you can't eat food using your mouth? They put a mini button in there. A mini button? So what's a mini button? Wow. So that is now a hole going straight inside your stomach. Yes. So what kind of food do you have through the hole? Just a special type of milk and some medicine. And that's how you stay big and strong, even though yeah. you can't swallow stuff? Yeah. Now, that's pretty amazing. OK, well, you've really taught me something. You did such a good job, I'm giving you an Operation Out sticker. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Waiting in Alder Hayes' emergency department with her mum is 14-year-old Charlotte. I was doing a tap dance. Uh-huh. We do loads of lifts and stuff. Go on. And just ended up falling. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. Well, I've been doing all day. It's like, ow, 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 like that all day. OK. How did it happen? Charlotte was at school in dance. Ooh, I love a good prance. She went to do a dance move. She's getting into her groove. When she did a handstand... Where did she land? This is the worst rhyme ever, Zand. Anyway, it didn't go right. Oh, no! What a fright! She fell on her head on the floor. That sounds very sore. Ouch! Well, I'm supposed to do a dance tonight. I don't think I'll be able to do it. Oh, no! Tapping his way to save the day is Dr Johnny Wong. Can I have a little examination of your neck? Is that all right? Yeah. OK. So I had a little feel down her spine to make sure there was no pain when I was touching with my finger. That hurts. She's a bit sore, is it? Yeah. I was making sure that her neck movement was OK, so she was a bit stiff. That really hurts. So the worst case scenario, she could have injured the nerves going from the back of her head down her spine, which would give this tingling sensation in her neck. Dr Wong takes a look at some X-rays done earlier to check if anything's broken. After some careful examination, he gives Charlotte the news. You've got no broken bones, but what we're going to send for you is an MRI scan. So, the X-ray is showing no bone damage, but to check there's no injury to Charlotte's brain or soft tissue, they're doing an MRI. An MRI is a special kind of imaging scan. It uses powerful magnetic fields to produce detailed pictures of the inside of your body. MRI images of Charlotte's head will give the doctors vital information about her brain and the soft tissue around it to make sure everything is working properly. I do feel like I'm in Holby City or something. No, you're not. You're on Operation Ouch. Yes, Charlotte, and it's time for your MRI scan. There's definitely no dancing for this, Charlotte. 
To get sharp images, patients have to lie very still. All finished, Charlotte heads back to the ward. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> What's going on with that bonnet? I needed to take my bobbles out. Of course. Now my hair is all messy and not as nice. Well, we like it. Find out later how Charlotte gets on with her MRI results. Well, in the accident and emergency department. We don't have to wonder, Zan. We can just find out. Charlotte came to the Older Hay emergency department with a bashed bonce. Charlotte was in dance class when she did a handstand. It went wrong. She fell and landed on her head. Earlier, x-rays showed there were no broken bones, but she had to have an MRI scan to check nothing more serious had happened to that knocked head. Dr Johnny takes a look at the results. Uh, I can't see any swelling or any, anything that would suggest there's any broken bones that we saw on the x-ray as well, which is good. So with the x-ray and the MRI scan, we now know that there's no nerve issues, there's no broken bones. We can clearly say that this is most likely to be a muscle injury, which is why she can't move her neck as well. She will get better in probably a week or two time with rest and some good ice on under the actual neck herself. Good news! But what does it mean for Charlotte? Just needs to do exercises, 10 every hour. That's a lot. So it doesn't go stiff and sore again. But I can't dance or do anything for two weeks. What will you do? I'll just have to do singing instead of dancing <laughs> for a while. Good plan. Bye! Bye. We'll show you how to mystify your friends with our mind-bending trick. And we give these hungry leeches a tasty snack by letting them feed on my arm. But now, did you know there are over 600 muscles in your body? You use 200 of them to take just one step and virtually all of them to throw a ball. Wow, that's amazing. And so's this. This is South London, a deserted urban landscape and a stage to showcase something spectacular. Fancy a stroll up into the air? There are no wires and this isn't trick photography. It's all skill and some ridiculously impressive muscles. Meet Tim Livewire Sheep. He's the world champion free runner, and he has an amazing body. Tim first started free running when he was 16 years old. Tim is a professional, so don't even think about trying this at home or outside the home or anywhere. Before I start a new run, I'll always go and check every piece of equipment. That's very important, safety first. We'll check every wall that it's grippy, there's no loose bricks. Look, he's like Spider-Man. It's very important to us that we don't damage the environment we go into. And did you know Tim is one of the few free runners in the world able to control a one-handed handstand? So how does Tim's body defy gravity? To raise his entire body weight into the air, it's the massively mighty deltoids in Tim's shoulders. Inside Tim's leg, he has developed stupendously strong quadriceps, the four muscles on the front of your thigh. And his speciality, the human flag. A move which requires crazily powerful abdominal and lateral muscles to raise his legs high in the air. Now that's amazing. Today, it's muscles. Meet Tiny from Tottenham. Yeah, we've already met. Tiny, put my brother down. Go on, mate, let me down. <laughs> You've got a lot of muscle. Can we have a look at your biceps? Not Chris, not you. How big is that bicep? 24 inches. 24 inches, so that's 61 centimetres. That's amazing. So Tiny's bicep is probably bigger than your waist. Tiny's muscles are big and very, very strong. But what are they made of? Well, your muscles are made up of fibres formed from millions of individual cells and blood vessels deliver the energy that your muscles need in order to move. Now, a single muscle fibre on its own isn't very strong, but when you gather a bunch of them together, they become much more powerful. But Tiny doesn't have any more muscle cells than Chris. So how did Tiny's muscles get so big? Tiny, how have your muscles got so big and strong? I've been training for 15 years. The only day I don't train is Christmas Day because the gym's shut. I don't train on Christmas Day. 
Right, so when Tiny goes to the gym and lifts weights, what happens is the heavy weight causes small tears in the muscle fibers, and that stimulates his body to build those fibers back bigger and stronger than before. That's how his muscles got so big and strong. Tiny, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for coming in today. <laughs> Chris, never be cheeky to a man called Tiny. So, how do our muscles actually work? Now, your brain controls your muscles by sending a small electrical charge down a nerve to the muscle. That tells the muscle to move. But what happens when we take control away from the brain and stimulate the muscle directly with these electrodes? I'm attaching electricity conducting pads to Chris's arms. When I press these buttons, electrical charges are sent directly to his muscles, which will make his arms move. See? That was me. Now let's see how many beakers Chris can down while I try to override his brain and control his muscles. OK, Chris, 15 glasses, 30 seconds. Now remember, I'm in control. You've got to drink as much as you can. Right, you ready? No problem. Go. <laughs> Chris is struggling because whilst his brain is sending electrical charges to move his muscles correctly, I'm interfering by sending my own electric charges. With these opposing charges fighting each other, Chris's coordination is all over the place. I'll let go of it. There we go. Oh. <laughs> you, can't, you, can't, you cannot let go. No, right. Just put it down. Just... No, I can't. <laughs> Yeah, you, 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 I'm I pretty well, only two left. <laughs> <laughs>